Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review and it's of a Sultan Pasha Attar. Now, uh, before I go any further and uh, say anything that sounds remotely ridiculous to anybody, I just want to say that I do not have the vocabulary, the words, the heart, the soul, the mind to talk about this fragrance, okay? So anything I'm going to say here is probably not good enough because these atars are something completely foreign to me. Um, as you know, I have a routine. I love to spray my fragrances. One of the reasons I cannot wait for Sultan Pasha's sprayable atars, and you can bet your bottom dollar, I will ask him about that on our live stream that we're having Sunday, December the 10th, 2023, at noon Central Standard Time. So if you could join us, that would be amazing. I'd love to have as many people there as possible. Please come with questions for the great maestro of Atars, Sultan Pasha. I really do think he is the best Atar maker, okay, that I've ever smelled. And I've smelled some high-end uh, Atars. He puts brands like Henri Jacques, which charges $700, $800, dollars for their little Atars to shame. He absolutely butchers Henri Jacques. And uh, the Amouage Atars that I've smelled, they're not even on the same planet. Uh, Sultan Pasha's Atars are by far some of the more moving uh, Atars I've ever smelled. They move me. They're, they're experiences. They really are. And they last forever. So how do you talk about a fragrance that has a 15-hour dry down? I mean, it's, um, it's, it's impossible is basically what I'm saying. But before I go into rambling about this Atar, which today, by the way, the one we're talking about, I believe it's pronounced Fagia. F A G. H-I-A, Fagia, um, F-A-G-H-I-A. So before we start talking about Fagia, we are going to do a quick, and I say quick, unboxing. And this comes from my good friend, Allie. Uh, this is a freebie, basically. She sent me this for free out of the kindness of her heart, a Christmas present for Ram. I have no idea what this is. So uh, we are going to learn together what she very kindly sent me. So let's open this, shall we? I guess I should have came prepared because it actually is in multiple boxes or multiple packages. So let's see what she sent me. Uh, package inside a package inside a package. By the way, thank you, Allie. Seriously. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. It's very, very kind of you. I mean, you know, even the shipping was like 10 bucks, 11 bucks, which, you know, you may say, whatever, it's $10. But, um,. Still, it all adds up, and um, she had to drive to the post office and put this together, and so thank you. Very kind of you. So let's see what she sent me. Come to Papa. It doesn't want to come to Papa. Oh! <laughs> thank you, Allie. Seriously, you are way, way too kind. So I recently reviewed... Let me grab it. It's over here. Hang on. So I recently reviewed, sorry, I like blew my back out the other day and it still is, is very painful. So um, I recently reviewed this. This is Amouage Silver Crystal Man, which is in this crystal bottle, which is damn near impossible to find, right? Um, and Amouage is re-releasing this in, in their, well, not this particular one, but the gold, they have multiple versions in this bottle. Seal man was in this bottle, um, gold uh, man and woman was in here, So the, and silver was in this bottle. And so they're releasing gold, uh, they call it gold, crystal and gold man and crystal and gold woman, is what I think it's called. Uh, and they're $1,950 for these bottles. So I did a review of this because it was like the hot thing everyone was talking about. Um, and so in it, I said I would love to have a bottle of um, this of silver, the actual silver, Amouage silver. So, um, thank you very much. This is the Made in Oman version, and here she is, silver. Without, without even asking for it, very, very kind of you, Allie. Thank you very much. You know, it actually is a really, really nice fragrance. I know it doesn't get the love that other Amouages get, but, um, I am a, I'm a fan. I am rightly a fan. So now I have both versions. So thank you, seriously. Uh, for a man who has not spent a dollar on perfume in God knows how long, the fragrances that keep coming in from you guys is like, it almost brings a tear to my eye. Thank you, seriously. Um, I am not worthy of your generosity and kindness. Um, so I guess I can't say thank you enough. So thank you, seriously. 
Very, very kind of you. This will go proudly on the Amouage shelf somewhere. And look, um, back when they used to say man on it, which now I know that's like a bad word. Can't put man on there. It has to be completely unisex. But I like the fact that uh, they used to have man and woman perfumes. But um, of course, those days are in the past, it seems like. So anyways, thank you again, Allie. I am, um, I am completely bowled over by your generosity and kindness. So thank you very much. Um, so let's talk about this review, which I am terrified of reviewing Atars because I feel like, um, first of all, the complexity of the Atar is it's kind of one of those things in perfumery that it almost is like you, you feel it in your heart and soul. You know, it's something that speaks to you internally or, um, it's not something that you can go in there and say, okay, here we're smelling this particular note, and then it, you know, you can try to pull some of the notes out, and I'll try to talk about what it smells like to me, but really, when I wear some of these atars, especially the Sultan Pasha atars, it's like an experience. I mean, it's like putting on a three-day-long opera, and just sitting back and, and just, you know, reveling in the beautiful presentation and what unfurls in front of you. So, with Fagia, basically, uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, Fagia basically starts off with an amazing bouquet of florals and oud. The oud is resinous and slightly sour and almost like a marker. It almost smells a little bit like a um, one of those old school markers that had a heavy, heavy smell to it, right? It is Indian oud, um, Hindi oud, as they say on, on Sultan Pasha's website, but um, it's not super animalic, okay? It's slightly animalic, but not super animalic. So real quick, before I go any further, I guess let me read you the blurb. Sultan Pasha does like one sentence blurbs on his atars, which is crazy because you could probably write like a dissertation on each one. They're so complex. But basically, he writes one sentence on this one. It says, a very quintessentially Arabian smelling composition with powerful tendrils of rose, honey, and animalic oud. And this technically, I guess you could say, this is a rose oud saffron fragrance. It is. Um, but it's a rose oud saffron musk fragrance unlike any you've ever smelled before. So every single time, without fail, I've worn this to bed multiple times, I'm wearing this as my scent of the day, and every single time, and all you need is a drop. You just put a little drop and rub it in, and every single time the first spray, or the first... I'm so used to spraying. The first sort of hit that your nose gets when you smell it, every time I always go, fuck. It is just so unbelievably moving. It's a moving smell. Um, and so the opening, you're going to notice a couple things. You will get the and slightly animalic oud, but the rose oud in the beginning is beautiful. Like if every single rose oud fragrance smelled like this, the rose oud fad wouldn't have died off as fast as it did. It died off because shite houses kind of took over and seemed to just ruin the category, which is a category that I don't think you can ruin if it's done properly. And here, it is absolutely done properly. Um, and so the Indian oud has that slightly animalic bit, which gives it that Arabian style, that chemical like saffron mixes with the oud, and, and you guys have all probably smelled rose oud saffrons. But here, it's the quality of the florals that really just get the mind turning, at least for me. You know, when I smell this, um, I, I start asking myself questions like, okay, are, are these like florals he's distilling himself? Is he buying these quality florals from a specific place? Like, how are the florals this damn good? Mind-bogglingly good floral fragrance, okay? Lost for words, honestly. And you guys may not know this about me, but most of my day job is literally talking to people. Uh, and I don't think I'm very good at it. I've never thought I was good at it. Uh, even though I've done all these videos now for the last couple of years, I still don't think I'm good at it. But um, I can tell you that this almost leaves me speechless. The, the blend of florals with the oud is stunningly beautiful. So well balanced, okay? That's the way I, I, I would describe it. And um, just a breathtaking opening. You know, the opening salvo is like just, I mean... The oud sort of trumpets in the florals, like it leads the way, okay? It uh, announces the arrival of the florals to come. And, you know, when somebody trumpets in like a king uh, entering a, a palace or something, right? It's the person, it's the trumpet announcing the, the greater person or, or royalty or whatever you want to call it, right? 
And so the oud like announces this uh, th this floral combo, which is just the star of the show. The florals are absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. The the star of the show, hands down. There is a oris butter, and um, also so there's an oris butter, um, and also there is a oris root. So there's both in here. Is what is what Parfumo says. Uh, I don't know if that actually is listed on. Sultan Pasha's website as well, or just Parfumo, but Parfumo lists the Oris root in the top and the Oris butter in the heart, okay? Um, and, but Sultan Pasha's website, I think just shows Oris, but, oh, Oris essential oil is what they say. So there is Oris essential oil in the top and Oris butter in the heart, if that makes sense. And the Oris just kind of works to add this enhancer to me. You know, the, um, the, the Oris adds this beautiful, uh, slightly powdery, but very posh, very um, upper class, high class, like you're smelling something uh, way more expensive than you should be wearing. And that's actually is a pretty expensive, all of his guitars are, are fairly expensive, but you only need a little bit is the thing. So one milliliter of Foggia on his website is $128.77. Precisely priced, right? If you go to three mils, it goes to $386.30. Six mils is six hundred forty-three dollars eighty-three cents, and twelve mils is um, one thousand one hundred fifty-eight dollars and ninety cents. So that's for the big boy, I guess, right? The big boy guitar. Um, and so, but the um, the characterization of it being a rose oud, I would say, should not put you off, okay? If you don't like rose ouds, because this is so unique, and the ingredients are of the highest quality you could ever imagine, right? And it's mixed in with basically what's called a uh, Shamama Amber Atar, okay? Which is one of the more popular Indian Atars. Actually, if you watched my uh, interview with Russian Adam on the history of Atar collection, which I've talked about, um, and actually I'm going to show you the um, sample set that he sent me long ago. And the one that uses the uh, Shamama Atar is Ambra de Coco, which you can see that's the one that is most used out of this Atar set. Maybe I'll try to review some of these before the juice is all gone, like give them individual reviews. But um, but there is a live stream on this with Russian Adam. So if you want to get his take on the Shamama Atar, you, you can watch the live stream there. And there's other uh, sources as well on YouTube. But um, this it's basically a proper traditional attar, which is um, very natural smelling. And it's made up of things like herbs and spices and florals and woods. And, and sometimes there's musk thrown in there. And it's like a very famous attar accord, if that makes sense. And I, it's a specific base that's used in a lot of um, uh, Arabian or, well, not just Arabian, because I think it's made in India mostly. But I think it is shipped and used in... Arabic perfumery and, and other uh, parts of the world, but you can take that Shamama Atar and kind of tweak it and make it your own. So I don't know exactly how Sultan Pasha gets his, or that's something we'll have to ask him if he makes his own, if it's like a base that he buys and then adds to it. I, I really can't say, but it adds this very traditional oriental style um, ambery base that um, you'll smell in things like other Middle Eastern compositions, and I think it's in Bahor and stuff like that. Um, but there's that when you wear this fragrance the 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 point that I would really want to push when I'm talking about this atar and other Sultan Pasha atars that I've spelled is that they're just very relaxing not all of them are relaxing because I know some of them are very animalic but even the animalics the way they're used just feels like it's very blissful in nature um, like you can just kind of throw your head back close your eyes and just allow the fragrance to unfurl you know just like taking a break like people, how people used to smoke cigarettes back in the day, swipe your hand with this and just kind of put your head back and take a break and just smell the beauty. That's the way I've been wearing these guitars. A lot of times I'll like swipe them at night um, and just kind of wear it as a before bed fragrance, but it lasts so long in the morning I can still smell it clear as day is the problem with doing that. Um, and so just imagine like when I say the fragrance unfurl, imagining like a flower literally opening up, right? If you've ever seen flowers uh, being on like fast forward where you can just watch the flower open up or turn to the sun. Sunflowers turn to the sun, right? Just imagine something like that. And um, I used to think that 
Early on in my perfume journey, I used to think that I did not like florals. There were a lot of florals that really put me off, right? When the, Early on, um, when I would smell like a rose heavy scent, I was like, nope, it's not for me. Tuberose, if I saw tuberose in a scent, I would just run the other way. And I've come so far um, with florals in that I realize it's the way that they're executed. And this right here for me, this is a properly done floral. This is kind of one of those, um, I would count some of the florals that I've smelled in from brands like Bortnikoff. He does amazing florals. He does amazing things with frangipani and Ylang Ylang and Lotus and these amazing flowers, right? Um, and even Russian Adams creations with things like Walima and other floral compositions have sort of changed my outlook on just florals in general. And there actually is a Russian Adam fragrance that this Atar got compared to online. And whenever I read it, I was like, okay, this, um, I see where they're coming from. And I'll reveal that to you before the video is over. So there is something that's kind of in the ballpark, um, but they kind of go separate directions. They, they go their own way. But I can see where they're coming from as far as the similarities go. So, um, the different types of florals that are blended in here. In the top, you have Persian Rose Absolute. Uh, in the heart, you have Rose Edwardia Absolute and Rose Centrifolia Absolute, which is the big roses. I think sometimes they're called like shrub roses because they're so, or cabbage roses, I believe they're called, because they're just so huge. They almost look like a cabbage. They're the big giant roses. Um, and then on top of that, you have Jasmine Grandiflorum Absolute, okay? And so what ends up happening, the way that the fragrance breaks down on, on my skin, so you get that intro of um, oud and florals, and you definitely smell both, but the oud is much more prominent in the top. Even though it's a base note, I get a lot of it up front, a lot of the animalic oud up front. And then it ends up coming, coming and turning into this sort of um, thick honey, like um, very viscous honey. So imagine a very thick, viscous honey that complements the florals beautifully, okay? And the um, florals just make the fragrance, as it continues to dry, you get the oud, you get the thick viscous honey, but you get a lot of very fresh and um, sort of tranquil florals, if, if that makes sense. The florals in here are relaxing, but they allow the heavier, the heavier notes in the fragrance, like the oud and the honey, and that Shamama Amber uh, Atar in the base, um, it sort of allows the other lighter notes still to shine. It was kind of executed in a way where they never overpower. You know, the, the stars of the show are really allowed to be the stars of the show in their due time, and everything just sort of comes together. The fragrance does change a little bit, but you know, Atars were so different to perfumery. They don't have transitions per se, like some of the, when you spray uh, a fragrance that has alcohol or it's an eau de toilette or an eau de parfum, I feel like it changes differently. There are more distinct trans transitions or while the Atars do transition, I feel like there's such long fragrances that it's so hard unless you're just constantly smelling it, which, you know, even if you did, I think it changes so slowly over time that you would have such a hard time picking it up. It's like trying to watch your, um, it's like trying to watch your fingernails grow or something. You know what I mean? Like, uh, obviously they're growing, but you can't sit there and, and, and watch them. You'll just notice as the days and, and a week goes on that they're getting longer, right? And that's how it feels like the Atar sort of, uh, or trying to watch the hour hand on the clock actually move, right? You're seeing it, but you're but it's moving so slowly, you're not actually picking it up with the eye. It's a very similar thing with the Atars to me. Um, and But it's almost like, just imagine that as the oud transitions into the florals, the florals get glossed in honey. So imagine um, the queen painting the roses red from Alice in Wonderland. Imagine the roses just being painted with this honey, uh, this very viscous honey that, you know, when the paint drips off of the rose in Alice in Wonderland, it's that big red paint, right? Right. Imagine this big thick glob of honey just sort of fall, falling off the flower, but it's not a honey that overpowers the flower. You can still smell the flower underneath the um, glass of honey, if that makes sense. Uh, and um, so, so underneath, you're still getting the beautiful florals, and the oud and the wood 
um, sort of work together because there is a woodiness in, in here as well. There's a Mysore sandalwood note that's listed, um, but it almost works together as the fragrance continues to dry, as the hours turn and you get that viscous honey with the florals and some of the wood starts to come in. The oud is still there, but it's lost a lot of that animalic power in the opening. And it starts to smell a little bit like tonka. I had a, a blotter of tonka somewhere. Ah, it fell. Um, so I put this on here days ago. Days. This is an actual tonka bean that Russian Adam sent me. And you can still smell it clear as day. This will be on here for three weeks. Uh, and real tonka has this sort of um, spicy, almost hay-like smell that can almost come across as tobacco, to be honest with you. And, but there's almost a little hint of that that tends to come and go. He noted, he says that there's tendrils of, of rose. It feels like there's tendrils of this sort of spicy tobacco that just comes and goes in this fragrance, even though it's not listed. And um, so let me take you through the breakdown again. So in the top, you basically have this resinous oud, right? that announces the florals, the oud smells slightly skanky, very slightly, um, nothing that would put anyone off. It's not super barnyardy, and it smells resinous and sharp, like a marker, like the like when you sniff a marker without the cap, right? And um, this slightly animalic and sour combo. Nothing like the big fermented ouds that might put some people off, so don't worry about that at all. It's very well blended, um, very polite for a Hindi oud. And just animalic enough to say it's animalic without being a full-on barnyard smell. And then the uh, beauty of the florals is, you know, you never want to sort of take some of these notes and allow it to drown out the the, the stars of the show, right? And so um, the, the beauty of the flowers here is it really smells like a bouquet. You can smell the floral bouquet, but in an Arabic style. It's not a French bouquet, right? It's not your normal... Ylang Ylang, Lily of the Valley, Jasmine, Rose combo that you get in French bouquets. This is a uh, Arabic style bouquet, right? And there's all these different roses that are the, the star of the show. Um, and then to top it off, the, there's this Jasmine Grandiflorum absolute note. And Jasmine Grandiflorum, Jasmine in general is all about India. Most of the, the high quality Jasmine that we know comes from India. And um, Jasmine Grandiflorum is kind of like the gourmand take on Jasmine, if you will. So uh, it gives off this very honeyed, soft, if you've ever heard Persolais describe joy, he describes it as like running your hand over a freshly uh, vacuumed carpet. And you know how you can just feel the, the layers in, in the carpet, especially if it's a high quality carpet. The, the depth, the thickness just goes on and on and on and on. And... That's how the jasmine in here feels. It really feels very layered and thick, and um, uh, but also soft. It's not uh, a super indolic uh, jasmine by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a little gourmand in nature as it gives off that honeyed vibe. And the honey vibe in the jasmine sort of um, blends with the... Um, uh, with, with that very viscous honey that I was mentioning earlier. So just imagine the jasmine being very gooey and dripping and soft and, and textured and layered, and then mixing with that um, gooey honey note that I mentioned earlier. And the jasmine just adds this range of colors to the composition. When the jasmine seems to really make an appearance, there's a moment in this fragrance where, and I can never pinpoint it is the problem, the, the atars are so hard to... Um, to break down because I can't put my finger on it like I can with a eau de toilette or eau de parfum where you can almost time it to your watch sometimes and say, okay, hour three, hour four, it does this. The Atars, I just I can't do it. It's impossible. Uh, but it feels like there's sort of this moment in time where the jasmine blends with the other florals and the orris and to just give off this almost array of colors to the composition. Like you're looking at a beautiful painting. And even though jasmine is, is obviously a white floral, when you add that white floral to the composition, it, it makes the fragrance shine like you're, like you've just splashed the rainbow across the fragrance. It's like sitting, you know what it's like? It's like sitting high up on a hill and looking down at the sunset. And you know, when you look at the sunset, 
just the correct amount, just the correct time, you can see all of the different shades, right? Going from that deep red to the pink to orange, you know, you can sometimes see the blue of the sky still. If it's late enough, you can see the darkness of the night sky on top, right? The black, the black dullness of the night sky approach. And sometimes when you're sitting there looking at that, you're just thinking, wow, there's no better artist than God, right? Uh, and this fragrance, when the jasmine comes in and it all comes together, it's like, it's literally like you are uh, smelling these natural creations of, or the, the universe, if you prefer. If, if God isn't your thing, you can say whatever the beauty of the universe get, gives us. George Carlin called it the big electron, whatever you want to call it, right? There's just this natural beauty that just comes from, from these floral notes. Uh, and they're allowed to shine, right? Um, they're, they're not blocked off. They're allowed to shine. And um, it just sort of, like you can just smell the vast rays of, of colors. Uh, and so just imagine these notes all that I mentioned, just sort of bleeding into the Shamama Atar, right? Uh, or I've heard it someplace listed as Shamama Tool Atar. I don't know if Shamama Tool Atar and Shamama Atar are different, but um, I think they're if they're different, maybe they're different just barely. This says Shamama Amber, right, is what it basically says. So I don't know why I keep calling it an Atar. Obviously, it's an Atar, but I think the accord is Shamama or Shamama Tool. I don't know if they're exactly the same, but I think they're probably close. And so that shamama amber and amberiness gives off this herbal, spicy, woody, uh, very natural, very velvety smelling amber. Just imagine this very velvety smelling amber mixing with all the florals and the oud and all of the other stuff that I haven't really mentioned yet. But um, there are other things in here. Um, and it just smells so posh and so rich and so natural and so beautiful. And... Really, it's just the harmony of everything. How you take something like this with all of these intricacies and complexities and put them together in an atar uh, to do this, I don't think I'll ever understand. I don't think I'll ever understand. I'm going to ask Sultan Pasha, you know, when he comes on the stream uh, on Sunday, how in the world do you put all this together and in one drop you get this? How? How is that possible? Um, because it is it, the harmony of the notes. I mentioned earlier, it's a very tranquil feeling. Even though there's some animalic growl, to me, this is a very relaxing, tranquil fragrance. And um, um, so just imagine this sticky, floral, amber base, right? Paired with some of the other notes that I haven't even brought on yet, which are the musk, and somebody left me a comment in a in the first Sultan Pasha video I did when I said it says deer musk, and they said, "Oh, I thought Sultan Pasha said he uses an accord for deer musk." So he's obviously not using natural deer musk, like Russian Adam says he used Siberian deer musk, or Ensar says he had Tibetan musk or some long discontinued musk. There's a bunch of different type of deer musk, but apparently this is an accord that Sultan Pasha created, not the real thing, and. Um, and then on top of that, there's what I imagine to be real white ambergris in here. And it just makes the complex amber accord that all of these other layers, like the colors I mentioned in the sun earlier, right? The red, the pink, the orange, the blue, the, the, the black, um, just all of these different arrays and smells and colors. It just sort of makes everything seem to float on that amber accord. Sparkle. It's not a heavy amber. You would think it is because it's a Middle Eastern style amber. And the oud just, it's the oud is, the Hindi oud is just heavy enough that even five, six, seven, eight hours in, you're going to get just little hints, little specks of animalic touches. But um, in reality, uh, it just adds to the beauty of the composition. It never makes it too heavy. It never wears you down, if you will. And that ambergris just seems to make it sparkle just a little bit. So it makes the amber seem very warm and it works with that saffron in the opening and um, the floral oud. Uh, I mean, it just fits all of that like a glove, like everything just fits together like a glove. And it's silky and smooth and buttery and dense amber. And um, this Creamy, milky Mysore sandalwood is sort of the final hurrah, if you will, the final note that I haven't mentioned. And some people compare it to this. 
And I actually don't have a bottle of this, but this is on my full bottle list. Um, so maybe one day when I can start buying again, although with all the freebies you guys are sending me, I, I probably won't have to buy anything. Um, and, but this is what it's, this is what I've heard some people compare it to. And I can see the comparison. So this is Ottoman Empire. Now this particular one is Ottoman Empire part two. And you can see I'm cherishing my juice because I don't have very much Ottoman Empire. I have a couple drops of uh, one left. And I, oh God. So Ottoman Empire. Um, and then what, what is interesting, and I have a review of Ottoman Empire. It's one of my earlier reviews from I, over a year ago. But what's interesting about Ottoman Empire is there was a rumor that um, when Russian Adam first decided to start a Rizla Dore, that it was actually Sultan Pasha who helped him create Ottoman Empire, which was his very first fragrance. Uh, I don't know if there is legitimacy to that rumor. I know Sultan Pasha and Russian Adam are friends. So uh, what I will say is this. If you are somebody who is tired of going to Macy's or Neiman Marcus or Harrods or Selfridges or whatever, wherever you shop, right? And you're tired of going in there and smelling the same damn thing over and over and over and over and over, just repackaged, regurgitated, vomited out, put into a package for $200, $300 uh, and sold for whatever the new blah, this, x-ray that, is and you're just tired of the LVMH games and you're tired of the Puige games and you're tired of all of you know the Estee Lauder games and you want to smell perfumery on a completely different journey you know we all have our own journeys to go on right uh, and sometimes life kind of smacks you down and you're not ready for it and sometimes life gives you something beautiful a basket of gifts gold whatever it is um, you're not expecting it, but life shows you something beautiful because you're on this path and you get there. Eugene loves talking about the path and person he is and, and all of that stuff. And we all have our own journeys to walk on. But if you're tired of going down the, you know, Salvatore Ferragamo, uh, Versace fragrance line, there's nothing wrong with some of those. I will review some of those, but it's a completely different path. If you want to smell what natural florals, natural ouds, um, real Mysore sandalwood, potentially real deer musk in, in some of these Aris Ladores or Ensars or th those are the type of brands that you're going to have to go search out. And Sultan Pasha is one of those brands. He absolutely is. Um, I would, I, whenever I put the artisanal Mount Rushmore up of Ensar, Bortnikov, Aris Ladore, um, Sultan Pasha is right there, right? He absolutely is right there for me. And even as somebody who does not like Atars because I love my spray routine and the Atar messes it all up. I have to swipe and dab and rub and I have I have come around to wearing these because they are so unbelievably beautiful. Um, like I said, I don't think I have the vocabulary. Even though I feel I did a decent job of describing it, I don't feel like I even did it justice. I don't feel like I can capture that moment of just, oh my God, you know, just the beauty. It's a beautiful composition. And I know he has a lot of guitars and I know I'm only going to be able to talk about a couple of them because they're very expensive and you can't talk about everything. But um, uh, I would maybe urge you to check out the sample set. That may be a good way to get your nose on a bunch of these or maybe pick one or two that you think would be your thing and give it a shot. Because even if you don't like guitars like me, Sultan Pasha's work is is impressive. So can't wait to have the Maestro of Atars on the channel December 10th at noon Central Standard Time. Hope to see you guys there. Thanks for watching the video, everyone. Do leave a comment. If you've smelled Fagia, I would love to know how you interpret it. Uh, do you kind of see it the way I see it? Do you get different aspects? Um, it's funny. Two people can look at a painting and see it completely differently. Same painting, right? So if you get something different, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.